two to click group uh, just to make sure that everybody's on and or relatively close on and then we'll jump back to the 100. We're going to spend uh, time, quite a bit of time at the beginning at the 100 uh, doing different positional shooting and, and solidifying the things that we did yesterday or in previous classes. Then we'll work from uh, 200 in uh, and spend some time there before we jump out to three and four. That way everybody's got the rust knocked off of it, gets a refresher if you need it. If something's new, uh, we can we can do a refresher on that. And then, uh, then we'll work three and four. <clears throat> out to 200, y'all are going to get your steps in today. We're going to walk back and forth. Get you guys ready for for the uh, tactical games next weekend. <clears throat> Once we go beyond 200, though, I'll pull my truck over there, and just like we did last time, everybody will jump in the truck. We'll drive down there to to maximize our time, check our targets, come back up here, shoot again, and we'll do that for three, four, and see so we don't have to walk back and forth and take all in. All right, the line is hot. When you're ready, five round group to the heart. Five round group to the heart. It's on y'all. Okay, no, you're good, you're good. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, you can make your way to your feet. Make sure they're on safe. Control them with your master grip. And let's go down and check and see what we got. That's all right. That's all right. I've always got one wild weasel. You got a spine. Yeah. Yeah, you know. still got him in the spine. Cold bore shot. Cold yeah. bore shot. No. Everybody looks really good. So what we're going to do now <clears throat> is we're going to go back to, to the 100. Okay, we're going to go back to rough about the 100. And we're going to shoot a couple groups to make sure everybody's squared away. Shooting our correct targets. Okay. And then, uh, then we'll go from there, okay? Let me put my name on there. Yeah, yeah, the sign. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But you can't see it from back there. I can with my magnifier. That's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five well-aimed shots at the heart. After you get a good natural point of aim, the line is hot. Like clockwork, <laughs> Terps always won. Still good stuff. Yeah, that's that's not considering that my considering that my dot is this size, because mm -hmm. it's a 3.25 MOA dot. Yeah, that's not horrible. Yep. Um, hey Scott. And it's an 11.3, so there you go. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. You can let it out to that reset. Whether you want to stay in contact all the way out and then take the slack out again, or just let it out to that audible and tactile click. Um, and that will help refine that follow through, which will shrink up that group. And then on this next one, if we're still over here, and, and that's still still a group, that's still a group. But let's shoot one more with those things and see where we're at in relation, and then we'll make some adjustments. Okay. Look left, look right, make sure everybody's got eyes and ears on. Go ahead and assume that prone position, nice and straight behind the gun. Keep your natural point of aim. Once everybody has it, the line is hot. Folks, it's on you, the line is hot. Five round group at the heart again.
Scott, did you do something different or? I turned it down eight clicks. Okay. Four inches. Huh? I turned it down four inches. So four clicks? Yeah. No. Or that would be an inch. I turned it eight times. It was eight half, time. half, half clicks. I think. What are you running? All of a sudden. Yeah, it's probably quarter. Four, we'll see. That's okay. We'll <laughs> shoot it and see. No we'll more. see. Hey, just for, for people's edification, and I said this yesterday with running red dots, you know, they're all, it, they're pretty standardized now, but but still you get some that are wacky that are in like eighth minute clicks at a, at a hundred or, or a half or a quarter or whatever. I'm going to be honest with y'all, I don't try and do math and count clicks and what distance we're at. Uh, after a while, when you get a look at it, uh, just like I did with you, Scott, I'm like, yeah, go left three. It's an experiential based thing. Uh, but if you try and do all the math in that, it never works out. But if we are making corrections, we want to want to be bold on our corrections because if we overshoot it, now we've got a place where we, you know, say we did 20 clicks to the left and we're on the other side of the target. Well, we know we can come back 10 and cut it in half. Yeah. So the, the one thing I will say is be bold, but you don't have to do the math. Just kind of, you know, look at it, look at the range and, and swag it. I'm here to help you all with that until, until you get that experiential base. The way that it is, so we have to be as precise as we possibly can, especially when we have distance, because as that cone of deviation starts to go out, if we implement anything in there that shouldn't be good fundamentals of marksmanship, then we're throwing that bullet off even more. Okay? So uh, we can get away with a lot more when we're up closer. Uh, when we go back, it becomes more critical that we apply those fundamentals as, as perfectly as we possibly can. Okay? So like the tedious work here, but it'll pay off in the long run. Okay. All right, anybody got any questions? Everybody good to go? Okay, I'm going to step back here. Everybody look left, look right. Make sure we got ears on. And then go ahead and assume a prone position. Cover down on on your target. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get a good natural point of aim straight behind the gun. Wide base. Uh, we can go live. You guys are hot whenever whenever you're ready to go. Five well aimed shots. All right, Paul, I said you're hot. I mean, that would make me kind of edgy, but, you know. You know why he put me on the end? Because of the gravel. Because he knows I can't count. Oh, nice. Unless <laughs> I take off my shoes. Now, wait a minute. Were hey, you Marine worry, or Army? Paul, we, have, we have a few other Army. people here that, but uh, identify. that have difficulty counting, too. So. Uh, I'm an Echo, but I identify as a Bravo. <laughs> Got your good one. Donnie, don't forget with that pivot point with your hand back on the magazine like we talked about. now y'all uh, is we're going to revisit the positions that we did yesterday or we did in previous classes and I'll, I'll get you caught up if it's something that you're not uh, familiar with <clears throat> uh, minus standing so we're going to go back to the 50 yard line okay and we're going to do speed knee five rounds okay? and then we're gonna we're gonna come down and check it just because again we're trying to solidify these different techniques stretch the gun gun goes bang relax stretch the gun gun goes bang relax Etc. through the five rounds, okay? Still aiming at the heart. Still aiming at the heart. Everybody good with that? All right. All right, look left, look right. Make sure everybody's got at least ears on. This is gonna be five round speed knee. Five round speed knee, aiming at the heart, okay? Slow aim fire, don't, don't worry about a time, okay? And threat. Yep. All right, 
Make sure you're controlling with the mass grip that they're on safe when you're outside the trigger. Let's go down and check and see what we did. All right, this is potentially the walk of shame. We'll see how I did. All right, that did not totally suck. Good. Where's the one? One of them was his. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. It's probably one of these better ones. So we're gonna say it's this one way out here. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I think the makeup shot. I don't think so. Got yeah, at least three in there. We know for sure. So these guys right here. Okay. Good. 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 This is more just me not stabilizing well. That's okay. And then I completely missed on. Okay. No. No problem. I'm gonna talk about all this here in, in a minute. Don't let any of this phase you. You are here to learn. Oh no, I'm good. I'm like, this, oh. learn a lot already. Same thing with you all. I know you know this, you know, learn power up, power down, depending on distance. Positions. Definitely. Well, like I was telling him, I was like, I the red dot was rising. I was like, I gotta shoot. And then I should have just stopped. Yep. Yeah. Just like, so, so that's a good know. point. Everybody bring it in over here. We got some good, good learning points with this. Uh, good. I'm hearing a few people like, oh my God. For a lot of so, you, this, this speed knee is, is a new position. Okay, it does, it's just like anything. When we get a, get a new technique that we're not used to doing or shooting in a, in a way that's not conventional to us, uh, there's gonna be some problems initially, okay? Um, speed knee at, at 50 yards, uh, that's about the max for that one. Again, like I said, we're using it to gain a little bit of stability. We don't really reduce any mobility with it, um, it because I can still get up and move in that, but I'm also doing that positional shift. Like I said, if there's cover or if there is no cover, just reducing my silhouette. Okay, if somebody's trying to trying to harm me, um, 50 yard shot to the chest with a speed knee should be relatively easy. Should be relatively easy. Okay. Now, there are some things that can cannot set ourselves up for success, and, and you just said it here in a minute. Forcing the shot. Okay. And and I didn't bring this up initially when we were talking about it because I said you know this is just a refresher for most is. You can't force the shot on these. You got to kind of let the shot happen, and you have to understand your sighting system being in an acceptable target area. Okay, we're never going to stop the dot crosshair chevron or whatever we have from moving around. Okay, we can minimize it by by stretching the gun that isometric tension, but we're never going to stop it. Even if you're shooting iron sights, our eyes can't perceive it, but it's still moving. Okay, if it's somewhere in this high center chest in this box. Okay, apply the fundamentals, roll your finger on the trigger, smoothly press through uh, if our finger isn't already on the trigger, which it should be because I made the decision to shoot, taking any slack that's out, verifying that the sight's in an acceptable target area, and then rolling your finger smoothly through. Okay, if you get to that point where that thing is moving around, we can't settle it down, and it's on a downward swing if it's figure eight and or what have you, we got to fight that urge, exercise a little bit of tactical patience to go, I got to make it happen right now because that's exactly what happens to your gun for us right-handed people, goes down to the left because we try and get on the trigger so fast that we just forget about the fundamentals, we misalign the sights, which moves the muzzle somewhere else other than where our intended target was, or bullet was supposed to go. Okay? So we gotta exercise some tactical patience with this. Again, I said this is, wasn't a speed thing, right? There's nothing to say that we could uh, shoot around, bring it back, take a breath, bring it back out, shoot around, it does, doesn't matter to me. I didn't say that, and so when you know I failed to say something, it's my mistake, y'all's fault, but uh, you just don't know what to do it, and that's okay, that's okay. Um, Donnie and I were talking as we came through, he was trying to fight the urge to put his, his elbow on his knee, a more traditional knee. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? These are just different techniques and tools that uh, you can learn and use, or discard if it doesn't fit into your individual protective system. Situation is going to dictate what technique you need to get the hit you need to stop the threat. So if you decide critically thinking problem solve at the time and you're at 50, 45, whatever, and you drop down into what initially you think is a speed knee, but you can get more stability going to a more traditional knee and you've got that nanosecond time to do it, by all means, by all means. I'm just trying to give you some tools that you'll be able to draw on them through your mental Rolodex if you ever find yourself in a situation and you're not experiencing it for the first time. That, that's all it is, that's all it is. If, when we do speed knee for the rest of the day, um, just like yesterday, we had about half the class do speed knee when we were you know, doing speed knee and about half the class doing a more traditional knee. It's not a big deal, I don't care, I don't care. There's, there's not a wrong answer here unless it ends up being something unsafe. And then, then I'll say something, but otherwise there's not a wrong answer here. And we're all here to learn and, and build our own individual protective system. 
and go ahead and assume that traditional kneeling position. Go ahead and check your natural point of aim if you so desire. And then once you have that natural point of aim, the line is hot and you can go ahead and shoot your five rounds at the heart. Good. Bring that support hand forward a little bit because we get a pivot point here. Just take it, lay it, open it like a platform. flexibility. So now we have more points. And now give that a try. Ooh, shank that one. <laughs> Felt that one. Did you? Yeah. Hey, if you called it, no, no big deal. Yeah, it's going to be off. It's going to be off like that. Stand up in your work. Thank you, my friend, for, for placating me. to make sure there's nobody else that needs to be shot. Okay. Okay. Then we can retrieve that magazine, stow it, and do all that stuff. Proactive reload, meaning we shot a little bit, we got a lull, then I can do those swap outs like we did in that first class. And, but I've got time because nothing bad is happening. If we go to bolt lock, we've been shooting for a reason, and we got there to a reason. It's truly an emergency. Uh, so don't worry about that empty magazine. It doesn't do us any good. If it's your favorite magazine, we can retrieve it after the fact. Thank you. Good. All right, everybody good to go. We'll make sure we're on safe. Control them. That's the one I called. Yep, you called it, man. Everything else looks really good otherwise. Thank you, sir. All right. How are we looking? I got two in, and I, moved, I was able to bring this up a little, and that was just a flyer. Okay, no, no big deal. We're doing good. We're doing yeah, good. I'm happy with that. Good. Yep, and that progress, yeah. notice how we got those, those points um, in contact. Because yeah. as we come back to the yeah. what position we're in, that's kind of a leverage uh, pivot yeah. point. That's the obvious the three right there. Bad habit of leaning forward into it Four. Yep. versus like, trusting to kind of sit back on my hunch. Actually, mm -hmm. works. Yep. <laughs> and so, but where we keep our toes uh, dictates uh, how much mobility we sacrifice. Okay. So if we're foot flat and leaning back, sacrifice a lot of mobility. If we're toes up, if we can do it physically, we can still lean back, but it's real easy for me to take that support hand and push on my knee to get back upright and be able to move again. So adding stability with minimizing that, that loss of mobility just by that little thing here. We're launching freedom downrange. <laughs> Speeding me sucks. Yes, it does. It does. I actually like to speed me down. I like the traditional knee, but the traditional knee takes time. Scott's got your buttocles in, so once you have that. <laughs> ear buttocles. So we want to use these. I'm sorry, I normally ask you, don't mind if I touch you. Okay. Bring, instead of Indian style, go ahead and bring your feet out. Okay. Now bring your knees up. Now bring your elbows on the inside of your knees. Okay. And then when it comes time to shoot, once you get that natural point of aim figured out, mm -hmm. a little bit of muscular tension okay. via uh, Suzanne Summers' Thigh Master <laughs> old thing, yeah. and, and that'll help stabilize it up. It's a good thing I did burpees today. <laughs> <laughs> See the difference? Yep, definitely. Good. All right, once you have your natural point of aim and you're ready, go ahead. The line is hot, five rounds to the heart.
All right, make sure they're on safe control with the mask grip for your outside the trigger. Let's go down and check them and mark them. Well, so far the Brazilian ammo is not is not uh, leaving me hanging. I bet. It's a case that I bought recently, and I always yeah. test one. The spotlight's off you now. Scott just cross shot. Sweet. <laughs> Look, I got two right there. So, and that's just, you know, while we're here or you're practicing Everybody dry at home, uh, getting into that position, having something, you know, on the wall or whatever to aim at, really checking that natural point aim and then making a, a mental note of what angle am I at. So then later on when you go out to live fire it or God forbid you got to do this on your own, I can already say, okay, if, you know, they're down there. Yeah. I could set my feet up and I know that this foot is going to come at roughly as close as I get that angle where this one's here and it's that controlled ball like we talked about yesterday. And as I open my feet, my hips are angled at the appropriate area for that to get as close as we can, you know, under stress and adrenaline and that. So. I didn't do it that way. I didn't get into the position that way. That's okay. But Not everybody can do that. It's, it's just one way I, to I do it. I probably can. I just didn't think to do it. I, I did. I went like I was going for a regular knee mm -hmm. and then and then like went all the way down and yep. then step, just kind of kicked my other foot yeah. out there. And that might work for you. That might work uh, for you. So, what you sir? Good. It's in there somewhere. Uh, it's, maybe it's still they're all right in there, so that's, that's okay. Still all right in there. That's looking really good. Looking really good. How about you, Abner? They're all in the non-suck zone. <laughs> <laughs> which which means my group doesn't suck, but he's going to be sucking. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Good deal, good deal. Y'all just did a refresher at the at the 50 on the different positions. Uh, Mine is standing offhand. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're back at the hundred. Uh, about once a week, not lately, but once a week we come out here and we run what I call the American Rifleman Battle Standards. Okay, and it's different positional shooting from 100 up to, to about 7 yards. And this is going to be kind of a version of it. Where that uh, all came about is a guy named Reed Hendricks up in uh, Valor Ridge who got it then from um, Paul Howell at uh, CSAT. Uh, they call it the... Uh, 100 to 7, tough 100 to 7, or tough 100, or I've seen a couple different names, but I kind of modified it for some of the things because we do them just a little bit different, and so this is going to be kind of a modified version here for everybody to get to try. The first one's going to be nice and slow, and the second one's not going to be much faster because we're not going to run in this heat, okay? But the way that it's going to work is we're going to start out at the 100 here, okay, and I'm just going to give everybody a go command, and you're going to drop into a seated position. Okay, and shoot five rounds to the heart or to the chest, aiming at the heart. Okay, there's new targets that are up there. Then we're going to roll over into the prone position. You can monopod it. You can utilize your sling in any of the positions to add stability, and you're going to shoot five rounds from the prone position. Okay, once you're done there, make sure it's on safe. Make your way to your feet. Once everybody's complete, we're going to walk down and see where everybody hit with these two positions from 100. Okay. Mark them, and then we're going to go to the 75, or roughly 75, which is the next set of cones. And we're going to do that traditional kneeling. And on the go command, you're going to shoot five rounds. Again, this isn't there isn't a speed component to this. Okay, five well aimed shots to the to the chest, aiming at the heart. Okay, once everybody's done there, we'll walk back down, check them, and we'll continue that theme as we go. Then we're going to go to the 50, meet at the 50, and do that speed knee. Or if you want to do a more traditional knee, I'm fine with that too. Okay shoot five rounds, go down and check them, and then the last set of cones is 25, uh, roughly 25 yards. That's going to be standing offhand, so just like the speed knee when I was refreshing you guys on that was stretching the gun uh, to settle the dot or our sighting system, uh, you could do that in the standing offhand. We're going to shoot five rounds to the head, okay, ideally in the cranial ocular vault, but five rounds in the head, then we'll go down and check them, okay, and then we're going to come back and we're going to slowly run it through all those things but once everybody's done here we'll move up to the 75 shoot it move up to the 50 shoot it move up to the 25 shoot it all right everybody five rounds seated you can check your natural point and aim in that when you get down like i said there's not a speed component to this then be muzzle aware trigger finger aware roll over into the prone another five rounds and make your way back to your feet
<laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, at least they're all on target. You okay? So good. So, Not that's, sure that okay, was, but I'm okay. All right. Before that, I usually when people suck a really big one in, it's because they're getting hot. Yeah. It's starting to stack up. Yeah, no. yep. so. I just said it's a little different because I was lower to the ground. Mm -hmm. the grass All right. So. I'm good. Yep. Yeah, everything's a little bit different. So not bad. Not bad. Looking good. Oh, good. That's fine. Yep, that's fine. It's no problem. At all. And like I said, the whole premise. So, hey, y'all, we, we have you, you know, I teach you the monopod because it adds a, the, the most stability in that prone position, uh, especially if we monopod it and tighten up our swing if we have the ability to do that adjustment. Chances of you being in a prone monopod in a fight is pretty slim. Yeah. But the principle and concept of using that magazine for stability on a car hood or a barrier or, you know, a rock or something like that transfers over that's that's why we do it i had a warrant officer one time i was running a range in jordan and he, he's like i've never shot in a prone or, or monopod prone in a gunfight and i'm like that's not the point man i said you don't understand what we're doing here it's principles and concepts that you can take those tools and apply them to to the situation so yeah if it doesn't work for you in this instance and obviously prone unsupported works for you especially if you tighten that sling down then that's fine that's fine again you got the tools to be able to apply depending on what the situation dictates so uh, not bad Abner not bad thanks sir I have one flyer it's okay on the cardboard it's okay little little easier on the trigger okay that's what I noticed because I wasn't I still wasn't like holding it yep and so. as we as we come forward mm -hmm. we we expedite that pin in it to the rear but as we go back, we can emphasize it more. Okay. So uh, we take, if there's any slack in that trigger, we take the slack out, we verify that our sighting system was within an acceptable target area, smoothly press through, and then pin it the appropriate amount of time depending on the distance and how quickly I need to reset to be able to follow up shoot. Okay. The, the shooting process is the same. It's just we emphasize different things depending on the proximity that we are to that. Area. All right, everybody, look left, look right. Make sure everybody's got hearing protection on. Make sure you know which target is yours. Traditional need, five rounds to the chest. You can check your natural point of aim. There isn't a speed component to this. Five good rounds to the chest. Go ahead and begin. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Paul and Scott on this is when I get into it, as I'm coming down and my elbow's out, I corkscrew in and I make sure that I get that uh, the butt stock more center line. So it's more on my collarbone. But so it's lined up with my center line. And when I bring that elbow down, it's engaging my back and trap muscles, which is helping to lock it in and with that corkscrew effect as I come down. And then as I'm in that position, once I get to here, I bring my knee in just a titch towards my center line and I engage my lower back muscles because I'm not gonna be in the position for a very long time, okay? But it allows me to get that stability to get the hits and then I can uncorkscrew myself out of it when I go to get up in my support hand and come to my knee. And if I have my toe curled under, not laying flat, if we have the ability to do it, now I'm not <clears throat> sacrificing very much mobility. I can push myself up with muzzle oriented towards that threat and move to the next position. Right. So, but I see people all the time. It's, it's everybody, it seems like across the board, it's the most difficult position for people to get. But once we get those little tweaks, it zones it right in. All right, everybody, look left, look right. Make sure that everybody's got ears on. All right, this is speed knee. Again, no time component to this. Five well-aimed shots to the chest or some facsimile of a, of a speed need depending on what you want to do. All right, the line is hot, go ahead and begin.
All right, everybody good? Go ahead and retrieve your magazine there, Justin. Make sure we're on safe control mode your master grip. Let's go down. We're just gonna go to the 25 because now we're gonna go to the head. getting back into my sling. <laughs> I was like, no, I'll, I'll screw it. That muzzle device of his is effective, but it's brutal. It is brutal. That's what's known as a blue falcon. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get it's five down, you get any more. <laughs> All right, make sure they're on safe control. Much master grip. Let's go down and check out both of those evolutions. Oh, I should have aimed higher. That's okay. That's okay. That's why we're doing it all. We're I know that shift is me. I know it is. I need to be isolating that trigger finger better than that because this gun has a tight zero on it. I checked it. Yeah. Uh, relax that thumb. Yes. I, I know you bring you bring it over. Um, still, if we engage it these the three amigos will engage and we start to grip the gun we start to turn it yeah that should be straight because I, I end up doing yep. i end up doing instead of this i end up doing this mm -hmm. so try and relax these also and just straight back and then as this one comes you isolate this one we're pulling it straight back to here okay then, yeah because i remember you also told me load load the pad that way yep okay yeah thank so, you yeah never stop learning so is everybody decaffeinated? Yeah. Remember what that what that's from, right? All right, everybody. Lethal weapon too. Oh, sure. All the bad guys have been decaffeinated. <laughs> okay, everybody. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna run that again. We're gonna do just the exact same thing you did, but the only difference is gonna be is once everybody's standing at the hundred, I'm gonna tell everybody to move forward to the 75. We're not gonna run or anything, but we're also not gonna take a leisurely stroll. We're gonna get up to the 75 drop down to that traditional knee, shoot our five rounds. When everybody's standing back up again, you'll probably hear me say, make sure your safety's around. We're gonna move to the 50 speed knee, same thing, move to the 25 with the head shots, and then we'll come down and we'll check everything, and then, then we'll break for lunch, okay? All right, let's make it happen. I'll meet you at the 100. It's just shy of a mile when you run the whole thing, so it, it's, a, it's a fairly fairly decent test, or I think it is anyway. Okay, you step back here. Everybody good to go. Look left, look right. Make sure everybody's got ear, ear protection on, ear protection on. And if you need to get them up in your workspace, do a proactive reload. Like I said, you'll need 25 rounds. Okay, this is five rounds seated to the chest. Roll over into the prone. Five rounds prone to the chest. Go ahead and begin.
felt a big old drop go right on my butt. I thought, Shane's dripping water on me. Yeah. What's that? What you got? Take that, yeah, take that round out. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. No, no, you're good. You're good. Right, make sure we're on safe. Move up to the 50. Yep, next is speed need. Go ahead and make sure we're on safe. Let's move forward to 25. Standing offhand in the head. When you get to the cone, go ahead and begin. Sir. Don, did you get all five? Okay, good. Everybody relax, make sure that they're on safe. Let's walk on down and see how y'all did. Well, I centered that head better. Gotta move over. Are we marking them? Shane, are we marking? Uh, no, no, you don't need to mark. You okay. don't need to mark. Thank you. Uh, buddy, 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 buddy. Hot. What you, Abner? I pushed everything over better. The groups are here now instead of Good. over here. And except for Captain Flyer Pants, I also got that little bit more centered. That's excellent. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you, sir. It's almost more. like he shoots every week. I got more right than I do center. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, come on, you're, bring it in down You're here. a righty. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That he's touching them to the right? He, the yeah. Scott likes to do, just throw different stuff in there to keep me on my toes. Okay. So. Hey, everybody, good, good job. Really good job across the board. Um, hey, I, I was pushing y'all a little bit. I didn't make anybody run because it is crazy out here. Um, there's a couple reasons for that, okay? I said, I want you to get good shots. We never want to sacrifice marksmanship for speed, okay? Even the moving in positions, you know, as we were moving relatively quickly, we got to come in and take a nanosecond breath and exercise some tactical patience and find our sights because a fast miss does us absolutely no good. Yep. Okay, it does us absolutely no good. Take a nanosecond, make sure your sighting system is within its acceptable target area, apply the fundamentals and get a good hit that could potentially stop that fight or that threat. Okay. Um, speed will come with working with efficiency. Okay. And it's amazing, uh, you know, the bad guys, they can shoot really fast, but can they hit what they're shooting at? We gotta gotta keep our head and be able to make those bullets go where we want them to go, so we can we can stop that fight. Uh, even like I said, as we're moving fast into position, folks, a gunfight is a dynamic endeavor. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's a dynamic endeavor. 
we have to have some sort of functional physicality to come out on top. We might get lucky. We might get lucky and be that one person that, you know, I don't need to be in shape because I got a gun, I'll just shoot them. And that might work out for us. There are There's instances out there where it does. But by and large, there is some physicality that goes along with it. Whether it's a pistol, a rifle, a shotgun, or whatever the case may be. And that physicality might just be that when you get that adrenaline, cortisol, and all that other stuff that dumps into your system, and your heart spikes to 220 beats per minute, that gives you a heart attack. Because yeah. you can't handle the stress. And it will be a stressful event. Okay. So, being able to, we apply movement and speed as applied tactics to get us somewhere. When it comes time to shoot, we plant our feet, take that nanosecond breath, exercise tactical patience, find our sight, and make those rounds count where we want them to go. That's important. And that's a little bit what this exercise is. Like I said, this is a really, really watered down version of it. Okay, but now you have kind of an idea. And it helps us identify where we need to work, whether it's marksmanship, whether it's maybe doing a little bit of functional fitness. And I'm not saying that you gotta be a CrossFit, uh, you know, tactical games, uh, Olympia, uh, uh, you know, Olympia person. Paul. What's that? Like Paul. Like Paul. Um, you know, because the rest of us, aside from Paul, are just mere mortals. Um, but oh, we can God. all God, continue please. to strive to be a little bit better and be better prepared that if we do find ourselves in an event where we have to take care of ourselves and we have to protect the people we care about, be good members of our community and take it to somebody that's trying to take that freedom away from us, we're pre as prepared as we possibly can be. And so this helps us identify areas where we need to work, in addition to all the other things that we're doing. But this particular drill and the American Rifle and Battle Standards, and like I said, we, there was one component missing, well, two components. The, the seven to 10 yard line headshot to count for the mechanical offset, and then the running back and forth 10 times. Right, to add that, that physical stress that's in there. But but it's meant to identify these things. So uh, with that, does anybody got any questions or concerns or anything we've covered up to this point? All right, that's our signal. Let's go take lunch. Cool. With my feet up with my slippers on. So it's not like in my former job where I'd have to be out in this for several days, weeks, or months. Okay, so it doesn't really bother me, uh, but I don't want to add to the misery of anybody else here. So what I would like to do is this shooting platform that's right here, and I'll pull the weeds out and stuff that are that are out front. Okay, now this is going to uh, in, entail a little bit of critical thinking and problem solving. We need to remember what our number and color was, because we're gonna shoot one at a time. Come up here on the platform, we're gonna shoot a five round group from the prone. Everything is the same, just like we've been doing, we're just gonna do it at 200, okay? Five round group from the prone, Make sure we're on safe, step back, and then we'll put the next shooter in, okay? Make sure you shoot your own target. Once everybody gets to shoot, we're gonna go down and, and check them, okay? There probably will be no marking on this because the markers won't work on the wet paper, and even pasties that I have won't work on the paper. But I want everybody to shoot a group at 200 because that's the distance that we finished up with yesterday, okay? Once that's complete, there was one other thing. We might still do it, depending on where we're at, is go shoot seated at 150. We'll, I'll take a consensus. This is democracy. We'll let everybody decide what they want to do, okay? Um, but then we're going to start pushing out to, to uh, 250 and, and 300, 350 and 400 to start seeing what our guns will do. And I'll start talking about, because at that point, we're going to start having to apply some sort of holdover if you're shooting a red dot uh, if you're shooting a magnified optic, uh, low power, power variable, you probably, you've got stadia lines in there, uh, a BDC, and then we'll discuss what you got, Donnie, and, and how to get you on there. And, and we'll get gather some data there and figure out exactly how we're gonna do it, but we'll, we'll wait till we get to that point. Worst case scenario, everybody, and I talked to, talk to everybody, this is supposed to be blowing through, but if, if the paper and getting wet and all that doesn't work, if we need to, we can make a concession, and uh, we're going to move the steel towards the end of the day anyway to open up that battlefield that's out there. 
uh, so everybody gets a chance and we're not, not all clumped together. But if we have to, we can move the steel out and get to it a little bit earlier and work some of the techniques that we were talking about and then continue on with the instruction of what we would fin normally finish up with at the end of the day. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? What? Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't have a choice. We're doing it anyway. Are ready? Yep, whenever you are, Abner. You'll be real happy with two of them. Say again? You'll be real happy with two of them. Okay. All right, make sure you're on safe. Go ahead and get up. Scott, stay right where you're at. I want you to look. Check your position. Whole body. That's like a big difference because you're leaning in and moving the gun. Or you put your hips and toes down there. Send about three more and get straight behind it. Widen those feet, nice wide base apart. Check your natural point of aim. You need to shift your hips a little bit. Move your whole body. You can do that. When you're ready, three more rounds. Remember, slack off the trigger, verify your sights, smoothly press through. Training in the rain is its own special little animal because you're dealing with water getting into your equipment and into your clothes. Luckily, we get to be undercover for a lot of this because it's been a thunderstorm and not just rain. If you guys have been watching my channel for any period of time, you know that I've trained in some classes where we've been in miserable rain for several days in a row because. The class is scheduled, the range, the range is booked, and you got to get it done. Why it's low? Well, and that's the thing, like we were telling everybody yesterday, all those guns have their own personalities, and then you take bullet weight, twist rate, <laughs> combination. Yep. But I personally think it's, it is personality, because like yesterday we saw, with the exception of Dave and YT, who theirs were pretty darn close to what theory is supposed to be with the 5200. Right. Um, everybody was different up and down the line. Yep. You know, some people would be a lot higher. Um, Alexi was traditionally low the whole time, but it was acceptable where he wanted it. And he actually had no change between 50 to 200 His with the same hold and everything. So, you know, it just could be the personality of that rifle. And now you know, too. can operate with that. Yep, now you know. So, yeah. Either way, whichever position, these were all pretty much, you know, the same thing. But again, now this is a different rifle that you're shooting this class than you did last time. Caliber, too. Yeah, much so different, different caliber. So, you know, just like I was telling Paul here, uh, now that we're getting back to distance, you know, we talk about those zeros and, yeah. and the differences and what the book says it's supposed to be. And a lot of times it's vastly different. So just like in your class last time when we were here, 
um, in the intermediate. Yesterday was the same thing. When we went down the line, everybody was a little bit different from what the book says it should be. So in this instance, I mean, they're off to the left just a little bit. Um, that could be a zero thing, you know, that we couldn't see until yeah. we got back there. Um, but that could, you know, you could just be printing high because what, you know, you had a real good, you know, 100 yard yeah. zero or 50 that yeah. with that particular gun stayed the same at 100, uh, which is my gun does pretty much the same thing. Yeah. There's not much of a difference. But as we go out, we're seeing that it's going up because in theory, 5200 should be the same yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. But we see that it's not right there. But that's okay. It's a good group that you can work with. And we'll keep an eye on this, Scott, when we go back uh, to the next one. Okay. Uh, 250. Uh, we'll see if we're still hugging over here to the left side. Then we'll make an eye of the fly adjustment, gotcha. like just like we did for on the last one. So. Okay. Uh, it. Jana making me look yeah. bad. Yep. I was watching all your rounds. Good job. And I was like, she's gonna be happy with that. <laughs> So these were the two I said you'd be happy with. And then so we went one, two, uh, three, four, five. Okay. On those. I ended up putting the red dot here, which yep. is about that big, mm -hmm. that 200. Yep. And realized I can't get my landmark because I'm covering all this. <laughs> and from that range, all you see is this is just a smudge. Yeah. So and I put it here. Kind of hoping I would, you know. Oh, okay, okay. So that makes sense. Then. Yeah, I know. I actually raised. I intentionally okay. raised the red dot so I could get landmarks lower. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I wonder if those rounds are actually going to hit him in the head. Yep. Apparently they did. Yep. And uh, how high is your intensity? It's low. It's I've low. actually dialed it back. Yeah. It is. So you know, like I was telling everybody yesterday, this is the limit for these targets because you can't. There's nothing discernible, and the weather doesn't help us either. But so after this, when we go farther, we change targets because you, you just lose track, uh, even when you turn the intensity down. So. <laughs> okay. Step in there, own it. Yep. What do you think? Uh, no gun, say no gun. No gun. <laughs> I actually got hey, you got a headshot. That's good. Cool. I, I got an explanation. <laughs> yeah, There's a bunch right. of it. Uh, weather, being out in the sun, puppy belly after you eat lunch, yeah. get down shooting in front of everybody, different distance now that we're farther, uh, a whole variety of things. Your other two rounds went, went just right over the side there. I, I watched them go. Sure. It's, it's not a big deal. Again, just like I was telling Abner and everybody here, on top of the rain and stuff making, because you can see the backside of this target through here. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I've been, you know, Callie and I've been talking about how do we do, you know, fix this thing during the rain with shooting paper and have it come up with anything really much better. But so not having a discernible aiming point here, that's another reason why we don't use these as we go farther because it makes it harder. GIs are going to see when we go and hopefully the target's held up enough when we get out to 250 and shoot it, there's a black silhouette that's on there it'll be easier to get your landmarks to shoot uh, and, and be able to get more accurate hits. So, and you probably remember last last class when we did that, and we had Sean Antu that was here that he was in the intermediate class and was like, I don't think I should come tomorrow. I'm not signed up, but he goes, I, I think that's my limit. And that's one of the things that we're doing here too is, you know, understanding our limitations. Okay, now are any of us gonna be a, have to engage somebody at 200 yards, you know, or, more importantly be able to articulate that no probably not but we gain confidence when we do it and we establish our, our limits because some of us uh you know 200 or 150 that might be your limit for if you walk out of here and can justify an engagement that if it's anything beyond that no nope, i gotta apply tactics and maneuver and get to where i can take that shot if it's justified um and then it also identifies where we need to work just like some of the things we talked about earlier. So, uh, but like I said, when we flop over targets and, and Sean found that out, and I think you did too, Scott, was uh, and changed the target tree for the distance, everybody was shooting well because they, they were able to aim up better. So, um, but this brings up a point too with the, with the weather and the rain and the distance with these type of targets is to put it into context too, is can we identify that person as an actual threat to us, minus them shooting in our dire general direction, but can we identify are they truly a threat to us at 200 yards? 
know, can we see that gun? Mm -hmm. You know, did you say it's a perfect world and you can articulate that they're a threat, but can you tell? Can you tell that they're a threat? So, um, you know, with this weather and the way these targets are, that kind of gives us an idea, too. Would anybody be able to tell it, if this was a threat, if there was a gun down there? Except for you, maybe with your magnified optic. Uh, Paul, maybe with his magnified, if he, if he cranks up the power. So just, just something to think about. Just something to think about. You said stitch them up drill, right? Yeah, stitch them up drill. But they're, they're a little bit low, but they're all nice and centered. So aiming point here. Or did we, or did you? Probably, I'll try to big top, yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe I need to start looking at the shoulder. That won't be any. Yep, and that's again why we're doing this, to figure it out for everybody's gun and, and sighting system, uh, the differences. What I'd like to do now is get everybody to grab their guns and go to 150 and shoot seated five rounds. Is everybody okay sitting down in the wet grass? Yeah. Mm. What are you looking at me I for? Because you're going, mm. I got a poncho you can sit on. Oh, come on. I'm just messing with you. I know. Moist bottom. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm but but, I, but I would love it if you did sit on it because you know I'd get a lot of mileage out of that. Whole lot of moist bottom going on there. Okay. So, so that's what we're going to do. Everybody take a take a mental snapshot of where the rounds were uh, for this last evolution. And let's go grab our guns and I'll go to, uh, I'll put a cone at 150 and we'll shoot five rounds seated, and then we're going to extend it out to 250. Also, take a mental snapshot of how you feel with dry underwear <laughs> versus with moist underwear, which is coming up. This is the part where, in, in the description, it, it, it's that you get the, get the full Monty. You get the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> Whee! Sit down and get, get a wet butt no matter where, where you're at, really. Okay, so... Just so everybody knows, I don't ask anybody to do anything that I'm not willing to do. Oh, moist so, buttocks. That's right. Okay. Well, my butt <laughs> is just as wet as everybody else's. All right, now you can take two steps nice. forward, back forward again. <laughs> All right, everybody, seated Probably position just like we did last time. Go ahead. Just like anything else, um, but that's two, three, you know five, yeah. that's a good group squatting. Yeah. Is that what you're doing, squatting, not sitting? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So nice tight squat. I said, you know, you your buttocks is dry. Uh, I probably shifted over just just a little bit. All right. Better. We're just a little high, but it was better and a little high. Yeah. Yep. Much better. Much better. Good, Donnie. Looking good, man. And you got dry butt. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Still not bad. Still not bad. These are these are just to scare them. Make them make them think otherwise. <laughs> Rethink your position in life. Okay. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Apparently, I just get crazy after 100 yards. Well, it's after lunch too. Oh, right, exactly. You know, puppy belly. Right, so another thing with the uh, magnifiers yeah. is that they can change sometimes your point of impact because, like, especially yours, mm -hmm. you see how your um, your optic and your magnifier are different heights. Yeah. That's what I need picture. to. Okay. I was sitting there noticing I need to fix the height on it. Yeah. I'm like struggling. Unity makes the one that'll match up with your. Uh, the one positive side, she's been running it exactly the same the whole. She's been crushing it too. Yeah. So. Um, I personally am not a magnifier person, and you know, I talked about this last time. Do what you want. Uh, just for me, if I'm going to run a magnified optic, I'm going to run a full out magnified optic. It's just more junk on there. It's not junk. That's not the correct term. More stuff on there to get caught on things, and, and you know, especially the ones that flip out of the way, people with closer distances will flip them out of the way, and then it's hanging off, which is causing weight. To move things around flipping them back on and like paul said yeah it can cause a, a not on all of them but some of them it'll cause a zero shift because uh, now we've got a parallax thing that's coming in there 
So, you know, everything might not be lined up, you know, uh, perfectly. So, uh, it, it's all individual choice. Um, so, but you've been running it all day and it's been working out pretty good for you. Notice it. Now, were you shooting that yeah. prior to lunch? Okay. Yeah, so it's all been the same and we're still, still hugging here. So when we go to this next one, we're definitely going to make okay. sure and see exactly where we might have to click you over just, just okay. a little bit. Okay. And uh, how'd you do there? Uh, decent. <laughs> Using that opposite, that like slight rotation, mm -hmm. the outward pressure yep. instead of thigh master pressure. Mm -hmm. It's working a little better for me. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah. good deal. Okay, hey, so this is what we're gonna do. Now Now we're gonna extend the range a little bit more, okay? Y'all can go back and um, uh, top off magazines, drink some water. I made you get your butt sweat, but I'm not gonna make you lay down out in the front and get yourselves completely wet to shoot prone. So what we did before uh, with the one shooting station, or if you wanna shoot off of the table or if somebody wants to get off on the side on kind of the dry part of gravel, okay, uh, we're going to shoot that individually or, or a couple people at a time. I'm going to go and get the other targets and I'm going to bring them. I got to bring them up a little bit because they're at 300 now, but I want you to get data or know what your guns do at 250. Center chest. Center mass, yep, high center chest. Nice and easy on that trigger, Donnie. Yep. I shaked that one left. Yes, sir, you did. That's okay, though, you called it, so that's good. You're self aware. Left again. Okay. Don't do that. That's a million dollar instruction. <laughs> Donnie, send me two, two more good ones down there, please, sir. Hey, can I give him something real quick? Yes, please. Andy? Bad left again. And one more. You put it under the magazine and you just drive into it well, okay. and it takes a lot of wobble yeah. out of the gun for you. Your right hand. Nice and easy on that trigger. Take the slack out, verify the sight, smoothly press through, pin it to the rear. Think about the vitals. You yeah. got a medical background. Yeah. What's what's right here? Yeah, lungs. Lungs, yeah. descending aorta, mm -hmm. spine yeah. box. Yeah. So, so good shots. So clavy in there. Yep. So, yeah, real happy. Uh, this is just to get their attention so that they they fully turn yeah. so you can get get a shot. Um, yeah, yeah, killing. That's it. he shot awesome. my arm off, right? I saw that on YouTube. Good, good, good. Thank yep. you, sir. Yep, not bad at all. That does not suck at all. Nope, not at all. For an 11.3 inch barrel, shooting Punk M193? Yep. That's yep. not bad. Absolutely. So, Donnie, this is what I was talking about right here. Yep. Okay. We disregard those. You called those shots. <clears throat> I watched them go in. You know, no no big deal. See the difference? So, I mean, Abner gave uh, the sand sock to put under there, but again, even with the sand sock, if we bring our hand back, that's that pivot point, and that's where. Because I could see that gun through in my periphery when I was looking through the scope of it doing this. So it's super important we get that hand up there or monoponin, whether it's with a with a sandbag or not. And implementing that sling if you can, if you get it get it adjusted right to where we can get in the different positions and be able to tighten that down to add that stability. But I'd probably say probably about a about a minute and a half. I put 1.5 on it. Okay. Yep, that'll that'll bring those right over here. Still a little bit low, so we might want to think about that dope, yep. you know, like we were talking about, um, you know, probably about uh, probably about two minutes up, 
I would say. Uh, so something to square away or write down in a notebook or something like that. Uh, but again, atmospherics play a big role too with yes. all that. And like I said, we were talking about truing and that. I said I'm always, you know, kind of back and forth, and I told you why. But but it is a is a valid thing to do if we, if we had the ability to do it. Um, True and distance was five by six, about seven twenty five, if I remember correctly, off the off the top of my head. Uh, if you were going to really go out and true, and, and that's a good thing to do with a piece of steel, get like a six or an eight inch plate where you can have a backstop like that where you can see splash. Uh, we're not worried about left and right on any of that stuff when we're true in a program. We're worried about elevation, uh, so I don't even try and call winds or do anything like that. Uh, if we splash high or splash low, we know either going to take some off or take a little bit and put it on there and then depending on um, what ballistic program you're using, if they have a truing program in there, you can go in there and, and do it that way or you can take the uh, feet per second and down or up depending on what you need until you get that same same dope at that, that particular truing distance and then that's going to fake the computer out and it's going to change all your other ones. Yeah. So. All right, man, uh, we threw a couple, couple off yep. to, to the side. Um, that's why I had you shoot, shoot a couple more. So as we can see, you know, overall, kind of kind of a big group, but it ends up, you know, it's fundamentals late today, your butt's wet, <laughs> you know, all these various things. Um, as we were walking down here, uh, you're shooting 55 grain, right? Yeah. And what's your uh, twist rate? One and eight. One and eight. So again, one and eight will handle pretty much everything. But again, it, then it comes down to, like I said, what I think is personality of the gun too. Yeah. 55 grain might not be optimal. You put some 62 grain in there. That might tighten that up. And then as we tighten these groups up, because like I said, the ones that actually we shot a. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that yeah, right through clip. too. Yeah. Did didn't knock the clip off. But, so. <laughs> so it's still usable. I still still usable. <laughs> kind of sharp on this end though. Look, yeah, Careful. A little bit sharp. How about a punch right through? But as it shrinks that group down. Uh, you know, elevation-wise, we see that and we, we take that into account, but what then concerns me is we got a majority of our group over here, mean point impact here. So, again, you know, we get away with things closer we get, but we can refine them as we go back if our group is, is up here to the left. Again, not really worrying about elevation in this instance, but how do we get that center line might take a couple clicks over to, to the right. When we get shooting steel here in a little bit, uh, I brought out several big scopes, as you guys have seen me see me on them. I'll come down and we can make a little bit of an adjustment on the fly if we need to. Mm -hmm. If you're traditionally over to the left and, and calling your shots good and everything, then we can make a couple clicks and get you on without having to use paper, and that's easy to do. Okay. Now you, Scott, <laughs> I gave you a special target and everything, and look at this, not even a single round on it. That's what happens when you start running that mail. That's me or you? Me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you could have passed it off on him. You just let it go right by. Uh, yep. Yeah. So he left his rifle in the grass downrange. So dropping low at two, right? He didn't shoot. No. <laughs> he didn't shoot at all. I didn't shoot. No. His rifle ended up over at, there. It was at about 50 yards back. <laughs> but in in his defense, he was working with us down here. That's true. That is true. Um, all right, any questions on that so far? Does everybody understand what we're doing as we start to extend the range a little bit? Okay, we get to see a little bit more personalities of our rifle. We get to see where our zeros are. If we're shooting a magnified optic uh, like you are, Donnie, we, we start to confirm dope and, and make some changes. And like I said, you know, these are things when you true it, this might fix it up. And not the not the left and right, obviously. That's that's a zero thing, but the but the elevation. But also just make a mental note now, uh, you know, what it is. And, uh, you know, that's how we build data. That's how we should do it old school before we had all these ballistic computers and stuff. It took going out and burning powder and taking notes. So um, what I'd like to do, pending any questions, is because this is taking a lot of time, you know, even if we were to drive down and back uh, just because of the weather conditions and that. I want to go off of the paper now, okay? I'm going to move around some of this steel We'll go back. I'm going to talk a little bit about these farther distances and environmentals with steel. We don't have much right now. There's not, not any wind. And when you guys were shooting earlier, guys and gals, um, there wasn't hardly any wind at all. But I, I want to just introductory introduce you to, to wind because it could come into play. Nothing like formulas or anything like that. 
uh, kind of a little bit more a redneck Kentucky windage that if I'm shooting down at 400 and I see a little bit of right to left, well, instead of maybe even center, now I'm going to aim towards the, the right edge, okay, into, into the wind, whatever direction the wind is. Nothing, no rocket science stuff here, math formulas. You don't have to do do dose calc or anything. Because we've already established you're not good at counting, so that means you're probably not good at math either. Um, math. And we, you've done, but you have done admirably since this morning of shooting your target and doing it very well. Hey, she's she's putting you guys to shame, okay? Especially at this distance. So um, Scott took the title of uh, cross shooting later on. So, but. Uh, we'll talk briefly about that, and then I'm going to let you turn you all loose individually. It's not a free-for-all. I'm going to be walking around uh, to shoot the different positions and that on your own, and then we're going to partner you all up and start working a little lingo back and forth, especially as we reach out to, to the longer range. So initially, we'll stay kind of at what we refer to as the infield with the shorter range stuff, out to 200, maybe 225. And then once everybody gets to shoot the positions and and uh, have some fun ringing the steel, then we'll partner you up and we'll start talking about the farther distance ones. So before up. we get started on this, I wanted you guys to see what we're talking about. What's the closest one over here? The closest one over here is that little popper that's there and it's about at 75 yards. Okay, and then that one's 400-ish? That is 400 all the way in the back corner, right. it's just shy of it. So if you hit that one, you're going to earn that one. Now this is worth noting. Look what I got going here. Apparently the washing machine didn't do that good of a job getting my socks clean. So like I was saying down there, we're gonna we're gonna shift over to steel uh, just because of with the weather and the targets and, and everything else, uh, and we want to maximize our, our training value today. So we're gonna gonna shift over to steel. Um, it's not a free for all, but it's gonna be a little bit on you now for, for what we're gonna we're we're gonna do. So if you see the yellow targets that are on the right side of the range there, okay. Uh, the one that's at the far left, that is set just beyond where the 200 yard targets were. Okay. It's about 206 or, or something like that, depending on where you shoot from. For this initial part of it, I don't want you going beyond that yellow one. Okay. So what that means is on the far left side of the range, you'll see the there's four targets that are out there, a four target array that uh, the arms are cut off, but they have shoulders and that, so they're bigger targets than the other ones. Those are out beyond that. They start at about, uh, probably about 275-ish, and go all the way back to 400. We'll get into those in a little bit, okay? And, and we'll talk about, like I said, some of the atmospherics and that. But I, what I want you to do is shoot individually here and try the different positions and the lessons learned that we've uh, cultivated through today. And if you were here yesterday or in a previous class, what you learned there. So some of this is also knowing your limits. Okay? So some of the closer targets, try and see, hey, can we get them standing offhand by stretching the gun? Yep, I can get so many of them, but now I'm missing. So I need to go to a more solid, stable, durable position. Maybe that uh, traditional knee or drop down and do a speed knee or seated or something like that. Okay. So see where your limitations are with these different positions as we're doing that. You also you'd be confirming dope. With that, if you're shooting at something and completely missing it, um, and we know that we're doing everything correct, we got a good zero, it's maybe where the distance is, so we have to do a hold over or maybe a little bit hold higher because where we know our rounds are impacting with the personality of our guns, and it's getting frustrated. Don't go more than about three shots. If you don't hit it, go to either another target or come and get me. That might be your crib tonight for, for right now, okay? if you're left or right of center line. Oh, that beautiful. That was just to the right of the sternum. It's almost like I do this for a living. I know, right? <laughs> what you just did, do it again and hold just a scoosh higher. Oh, look at that. Just inside of the right shoulder. Do it again. Ah, 
That's beautiful. Come here, you gotta see this. Come here, this is really cool. The vapor trails? You can actually watch the, the vapor as it flies in. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. Go on, girl. Go on with your best self. That's great. I didn't mention it. I haven't mentioned uh, barricade or anything like that. But you can see the principles and concepts that we talk about, about stability, work in a variety of different applications. The only thing that's really limiting us is our, our imaginations. So. I said, I want to talk a little bit about atmospherics. I'm not going to get too in the weeds on this because that, that isn't this class. I want you to be aware and kind of understand them, especially as we engage these farther targets. And I know, you know a few people already did, and that, that's fine. That's no problem at all. Um, we're starting to get a little bit of wind. The sun's starting to come out, so it's going to change some things. Uh, so with wind, everybody here has been driving down the road. we got a long stretch. It's hot out, and we see that, that heat mirage that's coming up off of the road okay well there's a variety of different ways to to call the wind or to be able to judge the wind but the only true way to know what the way different trees or bushes that are out here and they're all different weights so it's not a good representation of what actually the wind is doing that that heat mirage that we get that's down there that sometimes we can see with with our naked eye sometimes we can't that's truly what the wind is doing now this is just a, a rough sketch of kind of what it looks like. And as we get into this next phase, I've got the different big spotting scopes. There's another one that's there. Or you can use your binoculars. So this, this isn't a wind calling exercise. This is just for your edification as we go farther down. So as we, if we see the wind in what's called doing a boiling, where it's coming straight up and it's just kind of miraging straight up, that means that there's just no wind that's there. Okay, or the wind is coming straight towards it or straight back, so it's not really affecting it where we can see it by the eye. As we start to come out at a little bit of an angle, that's about a three to four mile an hour wind. Okay, that mirage is gonna start angling just a little bit. Okay. We don't need to know that it's a this percentage or you know this degree or whatever, but if we see that it's moving, that gives us our direction, a left or right, okay and about what it is, about a three to four. As it starts to lay over more and gets about what it is here, or it's doing this, okay, that's about a four to six, four to six. As we start getting closer to the ground and it's going about this here, that's anywhere from a seven or a 10. Now it's not completely precise, but it gets you in the ballpark. If we look down there and that wind is going parallel to the ground that's there, that's over a 12 mile an hour wind. Anything past that, we can't read it with the mirage, so we gotta use some, some other things. Now, what does that mean to us? Okay. If this was a precision rifle class and we were dealing with optics that had mill dots in it or, or minute slashes or that, we can do certain formulas off of what the distance to the target is, what the wind is doing and come up with what our hold is into the wind. Okay, does everybody follow me so far? Okay, for us here, if down at that 400 target, and I'm gonna talk about what the holds are for us with the 556 five, here in a second, okay, but if say it's coming right to left, from, from our right to the left, okay, instead of holding center or holding up at the top of the head, like I told some of y'all when we were doing this, Okay. I need to hold into the wind and Kentucky windage it to about the edge of the target or what the shoulder would be. Okay. As we're doing this and we continue on, like I said, this is the time we're going to partner up. We're either going to have somebody with a scope or binos or something like that that we can kind of see the wind and tell you, hey, I want you to aim over towards the right of the target, towards where the shoulder is. So we kind of walk it in. Again, we're doing this for the context of this class so you know the capabilities of yourself, the limitations of yourself, your gun, and get to gain some confidence. 
when you shot that 400 yard target that was out there when I came over and we talked you onto it, how did it make you feel? Pretty good. Pretty good. Coming back to one of these closer targets, how hard, how much easier was it to shoot one of those? Pretty easy, is, but then I got excited and. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we got to get that tactical patience yeah. a little bit. Okay, but. When we're looking at this mirage, the last point on these atmospherics is everybody here has probably seen at some point uh, long range shooters that have a little Kestrel weather machine okay, that, that will, will uh, judge the wind. Okay? And you'll see people standing here doing this and reading what the wind is. Well, what the wind is doing right here is not a representation of what the wind is doing down there. Okay? The topography here will play a big role in wind. So, so far today, when we've been out there, the wind has either been, it initially started coming from our, our backside and going that way down the range and then it shifted at lunchtime and it was coming into our face. That's what we consider a no value wind, meaning it's not really going to affect the bullet at all. It's not going to affect the bullet at all. Not for the distances that we're shooting and not for the calibers that we're shooting. Now, if we're going extreme long range, that, that does make a difference because if it's coming from behind, it will give that bullet more feet per second and we might shoot high. If it's, we get a headwind, that puts more drag on the bullet and that slows it down and we might hit low, so things to take into consideration. But we don't have to worry about that here. But if everybody looks down here, why do we think the wind was going either up our hind end or in our face? while we're on this range. Because of the topography. The topography, absolutely. So we've got a berm over here with, with trees and shrubs and we got trees that run all the way down there. So that's funneling the wind. That's taking the wind where it wants to go because of the topography that's out there. Now if everybody looks down and if you remember when we were walking about 150 yards down there there's a gravel road and a cut that goes off to the left and it goes off to the the back range where, where Scott and, and, and Scott <laughs> square were in the back in that miserable range that was back there. Well, guess what that cut's going to do? That, that can direct the wind and at that distance there, we might have a left to right. If we go farther down to where the 400 is, you can't really see it here, but there's a cut all the way down at the 400 on the right side of the range. <clears throat> and the reason this is important is because there's a target down there. That's going to funnel that wind as it's coming up. Now, right now, the wind is coming coming this way towards us. And that cut is going to make it uh, that wind go right to left down there at that 400. So it's something that you need to be conscious of at, of when we get down there at that 400. Because with the 556, five, generally, I don't even bother wind worrying about wind until about 350, or really any other caliber. 400 I start thinking about it, especially with a 5.56. Even though it's going fast, it's a small light bullet with mm -hmm. a pretty low uh, ballistic coefficient that that wind is going to affect it. Especially out of these. Yep, especially when we talk about you know shorter barrels and things like that. So I want you all to be aware that these environmentals can affect where our bullet is going to go, especially as we start going out to distance. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Kind of a down and dirty on it, uh, but that gives you kind of an idea. Now there could be a point in time, the sun's coming out now, and since we've had rain, we should have really good mirage. We should have really good mirage out there. So if you look at any of these scopes or your binoculars, you should be able to see down there. What we're looking for is we're looking for what the wind is doing at the target that we are shooting at. Okay. That's going to take a little bit of practice because sometimes we get sucked into mirage in different places. But we want to look at the wind because that is the last bit of wind that is affecting that bullet prior to it hitting or not hitting that target. So going back to like I was talking about the people with their Kestrel wind meters that are standing up here and getting that, the, what the wind is, that doesn't do us any good down at 400 yards or other distances depending on what you're doing. We have to learn to read the wind down there at the target. Now to make it even more complicated, and this is just a side note for y'all's edification, what happens if we have gale force winds that are out here and we're shooting that 400 and in that cut at about 150, it's going left to right gale force, then it's going straight on when we go from 150 down to just about four, 
485 or whatever, now it hits that other cut and it's blowing the other way and these trees are funneling it. We can have winds that cancel themselves out, winds that we need to disregard, winds that we need to regard. That's where it gets a little bit complicated when we start talking about long range. Ready. Is you're gonna be about shoulders for your sighting system. Okay, and for what the feet per second are, unless you had something that was really crazy yesterday where you were shooting high the whole time or what have you. Okay, about shoulders. And this is where the partner comes in. So we tell them initially, hey, I want you to aim at the shoulders, apply on all the fundamentals and everything, and then we can see where it either impacts or where we miss and we'll get some sort of splash on, on the back part of the range. Okay, when we get out to 400, uh, just like I was talked to you in, start at the crown of the head. Start at the crown of the head. Sometimes we might have to have a little bit of daylight, but for most of us, start at the crown of the head, look at that wind, and that's gonna get you get you into the target there, okay? So, we're gonna do this for about 20 minutes. You can set up on the bench, you can set up prone on one of these. Uh, I wanna keep it for this on those two. You can monopod off the bench in that just so we're not getting people out in, in different positions and stuff. It'll make it harder when you get to the outfield. Once you've run through everything, if you want to play around again on the infield with the different positions, I'm good with that. Okay, But work that lingo back and forth with each other. Look at the wind down there. Utilize the scopes. Utilize binoculars. If you have any issues after you've shot a minus the, the laser range finder, then you can come over and verify it, or once you're done, if you want to verify and get more precise hits, use the laser range finder, find out exactly how far it is, and kind of dial yourself in. There. Your last shot went just over his left shoulder, so come left just a little bit. Come left to full body. There isn't much wind because that mirage is boiling pretty much straight. Come right, just a bit. You're right over his head. Well, let's let's work on that 350. Let's work. Let's work on the one that's slightly to the right of him. All right. Are you on the 350? Yes. All right. Send it when you're ready. Just off of his left shoulder, come left just a little bit. And I mean like, like half a man. Just to the rear and left of the short guy we just shot? Correct. All right. Oh, right there. You're on, you're on the right edge of the target. Come left just a little bit. You guys both hit it. Yeah, that was good. Come left a bit more though. You're you're just a just a skosh above where you hit before. Got it. That was a good hit. Do that again. Just off the right edge. Come left. Dead center. Repeat that. Dead center. Repeat that. That was just off the left edge. Not bad. Was that you? Yes. You shanked it? Yes. Hit! How's it going over here? He's good. Hit. Yeah, he's dialing in there. To the left. Shift right a quarter shift right a quarter body. Hit! Dead center. Come up half a body. Perfect. Do that again. Repeat that. Oh, beautiful. That was just to the left of his sternum. Well done. Do that again, man. Do that again. Gotta get up. Okay. Alright, that's your target. Hurrah! High and left. Wee! Yeah, I know. I've got it cranked up high. Hey, Abner, when you. Uh, with that 400 crown of the head, and then give yourself a sliver of daylight. Will do. Give me one sec, I'm gonna look at the wind. 
Might if I look through that real quick. Don't worry about the wind, Abner. It's just a scotch. Uh, Shooter ready. Shape one ready. All right, the three amigo directly behind it. Yes. Thirteen. Yep. Do it again. Hit. There we go. Thirteen again. It's on the left side, Abner. Roger. Just right of center. Okay. Not bad for an 11-3, huh? Yep. I heard a ting on that one too. What the what that one sounded is probably hit the edge right. and zipped right. off. But that is so satisfying, man. Yep. Because I have truly wondered about the capability of this gun. I routinely hit at 300 like it's nothing. Yeah. But where I shoot the crest. I have to fight to get 400 out of it. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to take the target further up the hill, but then I risk zipping it over the hill. Yep. So that, that feels good. Good, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big difference between that 100 yards there. Yeah. And, but it, as you can see, it could be done. Yep. All right, let's go for the 350. Send it. All right, to the left of that guy. Short guy. Good shot. That is just the right of center. Got it. Long guy. Not that higher? Probably. We got okay. Let her shoot this. Did I? Oh! Uh, yeah, she left it really low. Huh? Did I hit on that one? I can't help it. Didn't see it after star. All right, shoot her ready. Send it. Oh, no. Sounded like a hit. Left shoulder. Alright, it's the short guy that's crawling out of the ground. Good shot. Silhouette with the round circle. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna go for the little the guy down on the grass. Looks like you hit the circle. Is that where you were aiming? Was I supposed to? Are you on target? Oh, well, you hit it. The little Good short job. guy? Yeah, the guy in the grass. Send it. I was like, circle. I just yeah. wait. All right, I'm going to go for the furthest left target from your position. Black target way out in the field. The armless target behind it. You see that one. Send it. Is that me? Uh, I think so. Farthest left steel target. I'm not talking about the 400. I'm talking about the one that's far, far left. Yep, got you. Okay. Ready? Send it. Nick. All right, how about the 400? Uh, just above the belly button. Not that I didn't know you were going to shoot. Right beside it. I love it. Love this gun. All right, I'm going to go for the closest uh, three amigo. The closest three amigo. Top of the shoulder on the right. You're right. Whee! Coming off the gun. Video? Uh, uh, I think that's on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Did you say you were going to take your pants off? <laughs> your friends are significant others. That wasn't a 400 yard target. You engaged a target and were successful at almost a quarter mile. That's right. <laughs> So, that's the beauty of it. Bar. Yeah. yeah, because that's radial. Bars, okay. You actually owe in a quarter mile in a radius. Yep. If you can do this. Yep, absolutely. So when we talk about, you know, property protection, end of the world as we know it, home defense, neighborhood red defense. Dot. We're the red dot. Now you know your capabilities. Everybody here head out to 400 by applying the things that we've done all day today and, and yesterday. That's right.
Uh, Scott will initially pull it for me. Uh, it's just going to be at a relatively slow pace to get the idea of how we continue to follow through and lead these targets. Now, there's several different ways that you can shoot a moving target. Okay, there's really three different ways that you can do it. Two of them are actually only really viable uh, out in the real world or in the world because it's all, all real. Okay, the one that we typically would do in uh, when we were teaching sniper students was the ambush method, meaning that the target wouldn't be out there, but I have a discernible spot to say that stop sign looking piece of steel that's there, and I know that it's going to come up go, starting from the right and going to the left or vice versa, and I set up whatever my lead is going to be on that discernible feature. And then once the target or person breaks or comes into that lead, it goes bang. So I'm out in front of it when they're going. Okay? That works great in a very controlled setting when we know that a target is moving at a 90 degree angle at a speed that we know and everything is perfect. Okay, well, out in the world, it doesn't work like that. Unless we know for a fact that somebody's coming out a doorway and they're going to another doorway, then we can set up and they don't have anywhere else to go. Is everybody following that so far? Okay. The second method is to track it, to continue along with it. How many of y'all have shot trap or skeet or birds or anything like that? So when that bird comes out of, out of the chute, Hey, we get out in front of it and as we shoot we continue to lead our lead and we continue to follow through bang but we don't stop the gun okay that makes sense to everybody okay that way is when you, if you're shooting people that works really really well because you know people can be unpredictable so we get out in front of them and we continue to follow through as we press and the gun goes bang we continue that follow through we can't stop the gun because they're still in motion if we stop the gun then we might get a peripheral hit or it might be behind them Okay. The third way is taking those two methods and putting them together. When a target or a threat presents itself, jumping out in front of it to find a discernible spot to then settle on and let them walk into it. Okay. We, can, we can do that too. Um, like I said, the tracking method works best for real world application, real world, real application. Okay. Because of the distance that we're at here, the lead is not going to be, it's not going to be off the person that's down there. Now, I picked that target specifically because homie down there is turned sideways with the gun out, and that would be more representative of somebody that's moving lateral to us or at a 90 degree angle. So if he's moving this way, I don't have to lead much, but if he was standing still, I'd be aiming for under the armpit or into, into the deltoid on the arm. Okay, I'm going to get out maybe an inch or two just in front. The key point or takeaway on this is is don't stop the gun every time you want to make it go bang. No. Continue to flow with it and, and move the gun. Okay. So I'm going to demo this. Scott's going to pull it. When the target starts to move, Okay. then you can go ahead and engage. There's a cone down there that we can see. It's going to stop moving. That is your ceasefire. Also, I'll say ceasefire. Like I said, it's a relatively small window. Okay. This isn't a volume of fire. See how many rounds you can get while it goes in between those cones. If you only get one well precisely aimed shot, then that's fine. That's, you understand the technique, you're able to apply it, and you get a fight stopping hit. Okay? So don't don't try and, you know, in the span of whatever that is there, try and try and let go with a 30 round magazine. Okay? You can, I guess, but that's not really the purpose of things here. Okay? Once you get done shooting and if you want to do your threat scans and that, top off all these things that we talk about with the wide or fast protocol, go ahead and do that. Once it's on safe, your job then as the shooter is to run down and reset it to the first cone, okay, and then get out, get out of the way, okay. I'll be over there pulling it after Scott does, it, uh, does the demo for me, okay. Everybody? When you go down to reset it, then you can admire your work, okay. If we have our sharpies, we can mark it, or I'll hand this one off to everybody so we can mark the hit so the next person that goes knows what it is. Okay. All right, Scott. You ready? Yep. All right, go ahead.
so desire and it's in a condition you're happy with, go ahead and step off of the line. Go down and mark and reset. Yes, 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 yes. That did not suck at all. His muzzle device creates such a lovely fan effect. It just I, cools you down. Yeah, I, I got the shock all the way over here. Show it to the camera. All right, everybody got to go, all right? What is that thing? Um, Ultra Don. <sighs> you want to go down and see what you did? Yeah. You don't have to mark them or anything. I'll see what I got. Okay. I threw one. It was the one I called. So. Sure. I got one here on his back. Everything else was inside that window. Okay, good, good, good. This is just an introduction and a taste of shooting a moving target or a moving threat. Okay, Scott kept it at, at a consistent pace, at just kind of a walking pace. Okay, it starts out that way. You might get one shot, and then they take off. You might really get lucky because sometimes when you shoot the first one, they don't know where it's coming from or exactly what happens. So you might luck out and get a second one, especially if you didn't connect on that first one. But after the second one, guess what happens? Yep, they speed up. Yeah. So as as they continue to speed up, if we still are able to engage them, obviously we have to get farther out in front of them and continue to follow through as we go. Um, well, like I said I want to introduce this to people so it's not if they encounter it, it's not the not the first time that they're encountering it. They have some sort of idea of where they need to lead and <clears throat> continue to follow through so they can get the hits they need to stop that threat and get to go home to the people that you care about. Um, close, fairly close distance, small window I know and not moving very fast, but can everybody see, so, and you've all heard me preach before in the other classes, I'm not a big advocate of moving and shooting. Everybody was pretty successful on this within those parameters that I just talked about. Now, if they sped up some or we were moving and trying to engage, what do you think our success level would be? Pretty low be pretty pretty darn low right we might get lucky we might get lucky that's why I'm a really big advocate of whether it's a pistol rifle or whatever uh, we're either shooting or we're moving we don't do them together there's a couple rare instances and I'll teach you a little bit more with rifle because we got more points of contact and it's at relatively close distance but if you ever look at people uh, that are out now you know that have videos and things when with a couple exceptions and these guys uh, you know work at it quite a bit when they start to introduce moving and shooting, it's with a stationary target that they're shooting at, and most of the time they slow way down. Yeah. Okay, because that sight's bouncing all over the place. Well, that defeats the purpose of, of implementing movement for us. So I would rather have you, if you want to move, movement for you with applied tactics is blast off and get to where you want, set all, your feet. All last to cover and then Yep, yeah. or at least somewhere else, if there's no cover or a barrier available, plant your feet, get good accurate hits, hopefully stop that threat, or have the, then the ability to, once you get a little bit of scunning on them, move again. So so that's that's some of the reasons why, why we do all this. Okay, um, any questions on anything that we've done up to this point? All day today, today and yesterday, for those of you that were here, um, Everything makes sense. Okay, good, excellent. All right, well, that concludes Scout Marksman. Well done, sir. Yeah. Great class. Thank you. There's nothing, I could apologize for the weather, but 
As if the class down, wasn't yeah. fun already. Yeah. 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 Did cool cool it down. Uh, we didn't have to shift gears too much. The only thing that that we didn't do was on paper at three three fifty and four hundred. Mm -hmm. But we were able to replicate it on steel. We talked about it and everybody was successful with that. So uh, no no real loss there. No real loss there. But if uh, what I will say though is if anybody feels like they they really missed out, come talk to me and we'll we'll come up with something. Okay, so you make sure that you get the full experience, if yep. you will. That's good. Okay. A couple things need to happen now.